This is our first pardon process. So one, I'm going to give my statement on why I think Mr. K should be pardoned. Two, Mr. K will give him... We'll give his story to you guys because you guys are here because you're not conflicted on his case or whatever. Mm -hmm. Three, I will open the floor to questions from council members to ask of uh, Mr. K or myself. Four, uh, Mr. K will step out while we deliberate. And then step five will be he comes back in and then we issue judgment. Does that sound good, everyone? Okay. All right. Statement time. A.K.A. why the mayor's office believes that Mr. Kevin should be pardoned. Uh, I tried to keep it short <laughs> and sweet. Let's freaking do this. A victim of circumstance. A victim of shoddy police work, willful negligence. A man whose hopes and dreams were dashed early by failure to follow procedure upon the LSPD's part. A man that was shot down not far from his own home, while those believed to be the perpetrators were allowed to walk free following several admitted errors by officers themselves during the court case pertaining to this incident. The Dragon of Los Santos has a checkered past, so far as law enforcement is concerned. When the government collapsed, however, he, like many others returning to Los Santos, was possessed of a true entrepreneurial spirit, a fresh start, the ability to live a life that had not been lived prior, to eschew all former stipulations and stigmas, to begin life anew in a city that desperately required a new and fresh coat of paint. Throughout the course of the incident that we are seeking to pardon Mr. K for, the following errors were made by the LSPD. Captain Slacks admitted under oath that they did not detain or GSR test every suspect on scene. Officer Vivian Gray is the is the one that admitted to not GSR testing Barry Svensson, one of these suspects. Despite this, Mr. K's medical care was interrupted, was pulled out of the ambulance that he was put into to be GSR tested. He was negative. He was still treated as the primary criminal regardless. No investigation was done as to which gun shot Mr. K. In the official police report, a game of telephone was played in which Mr. K's statement was paraphrased in such a way to make him appear stupid. That's the nicest way to put it. Uh, finally, uh, Rami El Rahman, uh, someone who was on scene, his statement was not included in the actual police report despite his presence. <clears throat> Just some quick cliff notes there. Um, Mr. K was a burgeoning real estate entrepreneur with plans to allow individuals who could not afford giant lump sums of cash to purchase homes via a rent to own program, one that had nearly reached its fruition prior to this tragic and offensively negligent incident that would yield a felony on his record and remove his ability to operate as a business in accordance with the law of Los Santos. It is the opinion of the mayor's office that exceptional bias was shown toward a then non-felon by the LSPD in an attempt to besmirch his good name. This manifests in two ways. The poor and incorrect execution of LSPD protocol, as admitted by several officers on trial, to ensure that actual justice on scene could be achieved and the reprehensible way with which Mr. K was treated while in custody and afterwards. It is my belief that a great disservice was done to the citizens of Los Santos when Mr. K was made into a felon by this incident. The hopes and dreams of several individuals whom were keen on potentially owning a home of their own in the future was made drastically more difficult as the alternative and most creative avenue by which to accomplish such provided by Mr. K was then made impossible. Thus, it is furthermore the opinion of the mayor's office that the overwhelming and willful negligence displayed by the LSPD throughout the course of this incident more than warrants a mayoral pardon so that Mr. K himself may utilize the funds retrieved by the state in his sentencing in order to begin funding an official expungement. I'm not in the business of harping overly much on the uh, the verdict executed by the DOJ. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. Uh, there are just a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, actually, just one thing. <laughs> just one thing. Uh, during the verdict, it was advised by the judge that Mr. K ought to sue civilly, the LSPD, in order to pursue justice for the duty of care violations that transpired while he was in custody. <clears throat> uh, the other one, which I don't I don't think is 100% uh, relevant to a pardon hearing and kind of calls into uh, question the actual verdict that was handed down is, and this is the other one that I wanted to mention, uh, the presiding judge admitted his decision was due to letter of the law in this verdict and not the spirit of the law. Uh, once more, the mayor's office would like to highlight the uh, the suggestion by that judge that he ought to sue civilly, more so than that one that I just mentioned. 
Uh, that's my statement. Mr. K, if you could come up here and give your side of the story. Hello, everybody. Hope you guys are having a fabulous day, first and foremost. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. I know you're very busy people, and uh, I really appreciate you coming out and, and hearing me out when you didn't have to. So, I'm not here to point fingers or say, this person did that wrong, this person did this wrong, you know. All I want is to rewrite a wrong. I feel I could provide a lot to the city, and a lot of that was shut down due to this sloppy case, you could say. I feel like an injustice was done upon me, I feel like I cooperated to the best of my ability with the law enforcement from the start and it just fell on deaf and ears. No proper investigation was done. People weren't questioned. Things weren't looked into. Nothing was investigated. They just looked at me as some scumbag from the past without giving me a fair and just chance to prove them wrong. I mean, just before I came in here, I saw a homeless kid starving. No shoes, no shirt. What did I do? I took the shoes off my feet and gave it to him. Because that's what I want to do. I want to make a difference in this city. I want to give back to the people. And hopefully today, after you guys heard my story, just maybe, just maybe you'll give me that chance again to help this city. To help the people of this city. Because that's what I really want to do. And right now, as it stands, that charge ruined my life. It put a stop to all my businesses, all my plans, my reputation. Everything's just spiraled down since then. And I'm hoping we can get back on the right track today. That is all. Uh, let the record show that Mr. Kevin is in fact wearing no shoes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm all here. All right, so we'll uh, we'll open up uh, the floor to questioning uh, myself or Mr. K here. Uh, isn't this charge kind of a moot point? Do you run a business because you have other felonies? I was also wondering that. He's so, uh, as the as the pardoning process is written, uh, he's seeking this uh, particular pardon in order not only to have that charge removed from his record but also to be refunded the fine that was issued to him uh, for that incident. And it's with that money that he would be able to begin working toward an expungement, which would allow him to become uh, a clean citizen of Los Santos. Yes, and the other charges on my record are, are mainly from my time in prison where I was, you know, you know, a little unstable. It was a lot, and, um, you know, I felt, uh, I felt hurt. I felt hurt and abandoned, so... I'm hoping I can get the money back from this uh, here charge and put that towards my expungement, clean my record, and get back on track. Mm -hmm. When was the most recent time you were arrested? <laughs> Oof, I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> I believe uh, it was after my court case. Uh, the court case for which one? The appeal. Oh, okay. Hmm. I had a uh, evading um, charge. Do you have any uh, further questions from uh, the council members here about uh, this particular incident? It doesn't matter. Some I'm not here for the, the, uh, the I'm actual, here for the, uh, the original. Uh, the protocol that wasn't followed by the LSPD in handling Mr. K on scene. Um, if you guys want a little more detail, it's all in the court documents. But um, basically, I was driving in a car with my friend Rami, and we were pulled up on by a group of people. Um, they then shot me in the back while I was in the car. Uh, took my friend out of Rami out of the car, gunpoint and knife point. Uh, cops pulled up. They saw all this happen. Um, while I was in the car, a uh, gun was thrown on me, whether you didn't want to believe that or not. The cops then saw Rami getting held up. He blurted out to them, help, these are the guys that shot Mr. K. They then let those people leave the scene and only detained me and Rami. We gave them the names of the individuals. All the information complied completely. Um, they even stopped and briefly chatted with some of these people and didn't detain them, didn't search them, didn't frisk them, didn't GSR them. Me and Rami both came back GSR negative. So obviously I was shot by one of them. Uh, they never took the process. It's all in the court documents. But um, basically I was driving in a car with my friend Rami and we were pulled up on by a group of people. Um, they then shot me in the back while I was in the car. 
Uh, took my friend out, uh, Rami, out of the car. Gunpoint and knife point. Uh, cops pulled up. They saw all this happen. Um, while I was in the car, a uh, gun was thrown on me, whether you didn't want to believe that or not. The cops then saw Rami getting held up. He blurted out to them, help, these are the guys that shot Mr. K. They then let those people leave the scene and only detained me and Rami. We gave them the names of the individuals. All the information complied completely. Um, they even stopped and briefly chatted with some of these people and didn't detain them, didn't search them, didn't frisk them, didn't GSR them. Me and Rami both came back GSR negative. So obviously I was shot by one of them. Uh, they never took the proper steps to completely investigate it and give me a fair and just uh, treatment. I was simply told, letter of the law, we're not going to investigate anything, and you got to deal with it. After that, they raided all my properties, found nothing, went through all my rental properties while the renter was in there, ruined my reputation, and just walked all over me. I, I wasn't treated like a human being. I wasn't treated like a citizen. I was treated like a felon from the start. I was guilty until I'm proven innocent. And they never tried or even helped prove me innocent. They never investigated it. They just left it at that. And that's why I think it was unjust and unfair. So you said they, they shot you and then threw a gun on you? Yep. Yeah. I, I was wondering on the, the timeline on that. Did, did it take a while for officers to show up? Well, so I was shot. So there's two people on bikes and there was a white car. The two people on the bikes pulled up onto us. And they were like, hey, what the hell are you doing here? They had like crowbars and stuff. And then a car came up behind us. They got out and started shooting me. They shot me down first in the car. That's when the people on the bikes threw their gun on me and pulled Rami out of the car. The people in the white car came up, pulled him out, held him up. And then that's when, when they were walking him back to their car, that's when the cops pulled up. And that's when it all went down. That's when the Rami said, help, these guys just shot K." Um, the two bikes drove off. They got in the car. They drove off. Uh, Officer Johnson, who was the first on the scene, tried to call it out. For some reason, he was ignored. They were all let go. Um, they detained me and Rami. I was uh, pulled out the car, bleeding on the ground at this point. Uh, EMS were treating me. Uh, they stopped EMS from treating me, GSR'd me. I was negative. EMS started treating me again. They put me in the ambulance. They come back, pull me out, search me. Uh, just treat me like a piece of meat. They didn't care that I was bleeding. They didn't care that I was shot. They were just more concerned about trying to paint me as a criminal. You were able to supply any information that might have helped them to, to lead to who did this to you, I guess? Yes, I, immediately I, we I gave them names. The place, so, yeah. uh, once the cops pulled up, we said, those are the guys right there. We told them it was Jaeger, Mary Mushkin. This was, and they knew who it was because the, the very beginning of this, it was on an intersection at Mary Mushkin's house. We were on the other side. We were just driving through the neighborhood. There was a big traffic jam because there was a bunch of cops out front of her house talking to her. And we're like, what the hell? What's going on? So we're just chilling in our car. The intersection clears up once the cops leave. We drive through and that's when we get pulled up on. So the cops even already knew exactly who it was, exactly where it was. And we gave them names immediately. We, we, we didn't withhold anything. We told them exactly what we're telling you guys. Um, so they knew who it was, and they never searched them, fritzed them, GSR'd them, raided them even. We told them we saw them with guns, and they didn't they didn't seem to care. I, I was shot for crying out loud. Someone shot me, but they, they weren't concerned with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, Rami did give a statement. Uh, for whatever reason, they never put that on the report. I, I, I have a random question. Yep. It, is it? procedure for a, a gunshot victim to be GSR'd and when it comes back negative to be searched? Why were you searched? Do you know? I'm not sure. This was touched on in the court case. They said standard procedure to GSR everyone on scene and they admitted it was an oversight not GSRing the other people. Um, yeah, they didn't really have an answer for that. They just said, you know, it must have been an oversight. And I'm like, that's a pretty massive oversight if you ask me. You are on top of the two people that are GSR negative on a shooting scene with someone with bullet holes in them. I just, to me, it just felt, it felt like bias. I don't want to say it, but it, it felt very biased. Uh, it, it's the opinion of the, uh, the mayor's office. The mm -hmm. bias is the root of 
uh, him being treated like this. <clears throat> um, but yeah, they left Rami's statement out because it, I guess it didn't back up what they were trying to push. Uh, and I even uh, talked to one of the people um, who supposedly gave a statement from the other side, and they say they retracted their statement, and for some reason it was still kept on the report. They didn't add Rami's statement, and then they made my statement look like fucking uh, gibberish. Excuse my they language. Made you, they, made, they made you look like a, an incomprehensible, like, babbling old man. I don't yeah. know what the fuck that was supposed to be. It was ridiculous, and they they didn't investigate anything, and they rushed it. So originally, they arrested me for it, and then they let me go. And the next day, I'm in the uh, cells do, doing paralegal work with Rami, and there was a scene where cops had shot a tanker and blew up a bunch of people at Mosley's, and they were trying to charge my client for those, and I was just, I was getting on top of them about it. I said, guys, listen, the, the only way this could have blown up is by it being shot, and the only people that shot are you guys, so... You guys, you know, weren't, weren't uh, careful about this. And uh, the officer didn't like that. He just went away for 20 minutes. The next thing I know, here comes the cops back, locking all the doors, and they arrest me for this apparent warrant. And I'm just confused because it felt like they rushed it because they had me there and they, they didn't like that I was pushing against them. They never gave me a proper investigation. They, they never looked into the, any of the information I gave them, the names, the, the all the reports. It was all just thrown aside. And they told me, ah, possession is possession. Letter of the law. But I said, what do you mean? There's, it's not that simple. I gave you stuff to go off of. I gave you information. I gave you the names. I was clearly shot. I was clearly GSR negative. Rami was GSR negative. So who, who someone out there has a gun and is shooting people. Did Rami also attest to, to the gun being placed on you? Did he see that? Yep. It's, it was all in the case. Uh, rather, correction, it wasn't in the case because they left his statement out. Yeah. Well, he testified, didn't he? But he testified yeah. to it on the stand. But in the report, oh, okay. it, it should have go. been in the report because he's told him all that. And more. And names and everything. They left it all out. I told them names too. You know why Rami was uh, unable to recall so much about that scene? Uh, the questioning became very confusing at a certain point. And to me, when the judge said, I talked to him personally, he said, you lost, it. you lost the case because Rami said he didn't recall a lot of things. I said, what? How does that make any sense? So other people cannot recall stuff, but the moment Rami doesn't recall stuff, uh, suddenly that makes me guilty. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that he didn't recall were like tiny little specific details where it's like, okay, you don't want to lie on stand. So then, you know, it's be you're better off just saying you're not sure. But all, all the major key points, he, he told no problem. And uh, if they had taken and put his report in the police report like they should have, Instead of trying to add it on at last second, I mean, it would have never even got to that. What's worse? They, they, they took they took over a month to get this thing going. Uh, my, the question is, what's worse? You know, Rami saying he doesn't recall, or the LSPD admitting several times on trial that they fucked up. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's such a long time. I mean, it wasn't a swift and just process. Uh, you can't expect the guy to remember everything. Uh, any further questions? I feel like I, I feel like we've kind of possibly exhausted them. But I mean, other council members, do you have anything you'd like to inquire about? <clears throat> uh, no, I'd be damned to talk about it more. But uh, I don't have any more questions. Honorable Chief Justice Alan Crane, any further questions? All right, uh, Siobhan, could you let Mr. K out while we yeah. uh, deliberate? Because I cannot yeah. unlock the door. <laughs> I got it. I uh, appreciate everyone's time, and uh, thank you very much. What do you feel about uh, that whole situation he that was just outlined? <clears throat> uh, looking at the pardon, uh, I, I was hoping to say... Obviously, you know, I'm not the judge here. Um, right, so yeah. I was hoping we're, we're... to look at a wider picture... Um, committing numerous felonies after the fact isn't ideal towards this. Um, yeah, sure. There was the argument made, you know, of uh, is it really, you know, pardoning someone who's proven that they're, you know, just trying to do good in the city if they they haven't, uh, even though they knew a pardon was coming for them? Um, that That's kind of a sticking point for me. Oh, he he didn't know the pardon was coming. This The pardon wasn't even discussed until I think oh, okay. e even after his... Uh, 
his breakdown. I, I mean, Crane was there. I don't know if you were there, Cantor, but like he essentially took over mm-hmm. Bolingbroke because he was having like a, a, a perpetual mental breakdown. No, no I had no he, idea. Yeah, oh he God. had a he. he, he he was he was uh, despondent because he. I, it's my belief that the the trauma inflicted as a result of being failed by the system and being targeted like that by the LSPD kind of drove him to a uh, a manic point. <clears throat> um, I'm I'm just kind of weighing weighing all the information still. Okay, do you have any uh, clarifying questions that I could possibly help with? Question mark. There's obviously the there's the you know. Uh, red flags um, like uh, Rami uh, consistently saying I do not recall isn't really him backing up Mr. K's testimony uh, That that's a bit concerning uh, something like this with possession right like they, they kind of need proof that it uh, was planted and I know that can be difficult um, but uh, if it's been set up where that they weren't able to, to get any of that um and I, I do feel the need to clarify for you that there was sure, a yeah. there was a witness who did not show up. Oh, that's not helpful. Yeah, okay. and he was one of the people who wasn't GSR tested. Uh, who was on scene? Oh, was the fucking the Swedish guy, Barry, Barry uh, Svensson. Yeah, yeah, he didn't show up. Mm-hmm. So you know, didn't he got a, he got, be lost testimony he got, there. He got a warrant for contempt of court. Uh-huh. For yeah, not, for, for failure to appear. <clears throat> Uh, so obviously this is this is the first part and it kind of depends um on what we what i should be looking at for this because i i know i'm not here to determine if he was guilty or not but like right. what um we're here what we're, is the we're, standard we want to set uh we're here to weigh uh how useful his uh future business endeavors will be to los santos uh and his value as a citizen to los santos uh, I think that it was kind of mm. muddied by the uh, the LSPD failing to follow all of their protocols and treating him like a piece of meat, like you said. Uh, and <laughs> I, 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 I genuinely think that if it were anyone else, uh, that things might have been drastically different. <clears throat> there, there is, you know, the the concern of his behavior with the the rate act and everything uh that's also hard to ignore mm-hmm. um you know he <laughs> took very full advantage of that and tried to uh use that to his business advantage immediately that's that wasn't great right um i'm i'm very very in the middle here are you, are you talking about I, to be you... honest i it does uh it, it does sound like there were some things that went wrong here uh, and i sympathize with that um, Do you, but also, are, are you talking about when he yes. uh, he ran up to you in the hospital and was like, oh, yes. "I already have council members vote." I, I think he yeah, was, pretty he, much. He, I, I'm I'm pretty sure he was just kind of like super hype and like being overzealous about you know the future and stuff. <clears throat> right. He seems like an excitable little lad. Oh, easily. Yeah, no, I wouldn't disagree to that. Okay. Uh, do you have any other concerns before we uh, we figure out what uh, Mr. Alan Crane's thinking? <clears throat> I, I'll be honest. I'm I'm so in the middle of. About uh, what? Uh, Joseph, if you were not to have acquired this felony, courtesy of the LSPD negligence, so on and so forth, where are you, where are you at right now? I don't think the court record. Okay, well, there's there's a lot to unpack. The stuff that you and Mr. K brought up about protocol, uh, is just flat out wrong and ignorant. Mm-hmm. So the way that scenes like that work, in my experience, is that. When you're in a shooting scene, mm-hmm. aka there was a conflict between two groups, and you show up as a police officer, the mistakes made were not pulling him out and GSR testing or, or pulling him out and searching him. The mistake was handing him off to EMS before that was done in the first place. Okay, so so been... that's what that it it looks bad, and the mistake they're admitting to is that they should have done it in the first place, not that they shouldn't have done it. So that needs to be clarified first. Second, there's a whole lot of timeline issues. If I was looking at this case based on the record from the actual court case, as well as what Kay said here today, I'd have a lot of questions and I don't think they'd get answered. Yeah, so like, to ask how did they get on scene fast enough to have Rami yeah. there with the other people still there? Yeah. But somehow Kay is alleging that 
the firearm was thrown onto his person, which in and of itself is an argument I wouldn't even entertain in court. The concept of them showing up on scene fast enough to find him down in the car and Rami being of enough free will to point out the other people still on scene that did it doesn't make sense. Rami not being able to remember a single damn thing in court that doesn't suit him, but somehow perfectly remembers details of everything that does suit his case is a trademark of people who are obfuscating. Combine that with the reports I just read about Mr. K's recent felonies where he ran, he gets arrested. Rami then holds up a bunch of police officers at gunpoint Mm -hmm. and uh, orders Mr. K to be released. Mr. K then drives the getaway vehicle, according to the incident reports. (laughs) Oh, I have not Uh, seen that. So I don't, you know, so that that further compounds my issues with Rami being this shining star or beacon of truth for Mr. K and somehow all the cops are incompetent and wrong. I I, I will provide a a brief interjection. I'm I'm not done. Well, regardless, I want to touch on a point you just said. Yeah. Uh, This whole incident is the root of his downward spiral. Uh, this was the yeah. First... I heard that already. Well, I'm, I I, I'm telling you right now that a lot of the stuff might not have happened if he hadn't been mistreated by the LSPD. So you're saying that Rami decided to hold up cops because of the mistreatment? Uh, who knows what goes through these guys' head when they're and where did Rami get that gun? I don't know. Don't know. He Rami's not the one who's on uh, pardon right now. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so if I may finish, uh, my conclusion thus is that uh, I don't believe Rami and Kay. Uh, I think it's highly likely that Kay got got. GSR negative is ridiculous when it comes to whether or not the gun was planted them on them or not, because I've seen a million uh, incident reports where gang members get got by a superior force and they don't get even to shoot. They get shot in the head, don't even get a chance to pull their gun out. That's called, you know, getting rolled up on. Getting got caught lacking, I think the kids call it. So that that's that standard protocol then is for gunshot victims to be GSR'd and then searched in a in a conflict where two parties are in conflict. Yes, everyone I should be searched and GSR'd because mm-hmm. guess what? Some people can get shot without being able to pull out their gun. Doesn't mean they weren't in a gang shooting. If you, you know if you're in well, Forum Drive and there's two parties, the Balls and the GSF. And GSF happened to get shot, you know, lacking on the front step of Auntie's house. It doesn't mean they're not in a gang war. I think that's the problem here. And the problem problem that I'm trying to highlight is that Mr. K was treated like he was in a gang. And I don't think he was. <laughs> I know you are. Thank you. So uh, my point is, is that uh, all of this said, uh, I don't, uh, I don't put much faith in anything here. I don't think the transcript is very reliable. I don't think the police are very reliable. I don't think that uh, Kay or Rami are reliable. Uh, And I think that given the same fact pattern, I would make the same decision the judge did. Now, that being said, one of the key things that we didn't have at that time, which we have now, are things like uh, DNA tracking. We also have uh, a better understanding of uh, the ability to to fingerprint these guns and track, you know, who's been holding them and how long ago. And there are scientific advancements that have helped out and would be gratefully helpful in cases like this. It is my belief that uh, I don't think that there's a problem with what was done in court, uh, but I don't think this process is about correcting problems in court. If it were, it would be called an appeal. Right. Uh, my opinion is that uh, I think there's enough ambiguity here that I am willing to uh, assent to the request uh, with the understanding that I'm basically back in your play, Mr. Mayor. I mean, hey, you think this guy is going to stay clean and narrow and get an expungement and be a businessman and, you know... <gasps> Okay, I'll back your play. I, you know, I'll admit I, I don't think that the technical resources were there. I don't think that, you know, the court transcript is satisfactory to really get a clear idea of exactly what happened. Yes, I don't find Ellen anyone Green! reliable, including K or Rami. In fact, I find them to be unreliable. Uh, but sure, why not? I'll back your play. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? He just, you know, uses the money to 
you know, getting expungement. I mean, he has to save up 500k. That's nothing to sniff at. True. Uh, but, you know, what's the worst that happens? He saves up money, gets an expungement, and then gets caught doing something else. It is what it is. And, you know, that'll be your legacy, I guess. So, <sighs> I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll hitch my cart to your wagon. You know, whatever. Okay. With that thought process, Cantor, uh, how do you feel about mm-hmm. everything now? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be frank. I, I'm not gonna fight when I was so very on the fence. So I think uh, it, it does seem like uh, he had a lack of uh, ability to really defend himself. Uh, I I don't disagree to Rami and Mr. K probably not being the best uh, witnesses for all that. But you know, fuck it. If he does want to save up all that money uh, and get himself expunged, yeah, why not? Oh, and by the way. Uh, I'm very clear uh, the dripping disdain that that man has for me uh, and government in every way, shape, and form. In fact, before coming to this room, uh, I heard him admonishing me to Carmine and Bobby, calling me bitch-ass crane and <laughs> saying how Bobby should come confront me about not being able to hire who he wants for DS. Like I said, uh, that's not the point of this hearing, though. The point is for me to evaluate whether I think a pardon's in order, and like I said, I'll back your play. Okay. But uh, I think you're wrong. I think the man's a piece of shit, and I think he's going to reoffend. Come back in. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Kevin, it is the decision of this uh, pardon panel uh, with a unanimous vote, three to zero, that you, for this incident, be absolved of your crimes and reinstated the money that you were fined so that you may fund your expungement, sir. One fifth of it. Oh my god, thank you so much everyone. I won't let you guys down. This means a lot. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for seeing my side and having my back and uh, thank you so much. How much how much were you fined for this? Uh 30,000 something. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All right, your 30,000 has been repaid. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Hey, don't thank me, man. Thank these guys. I can send you some free picks later or something. Make up for it. Okay, sure. I mean, you got some get some nice uh, grippers there. Oh yeah, my nails are just the length where it helps get that extra grip. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll have you know that uh, Mr. Alan Crane there kind of went to bat for you. God, thank you so much. Hey, don't thank me, man. Thank these guys. I can send you some free picks later or something. Make up for it. Okay, sure. I mean, you got some, get some nice uh, grippers there. 